Welcome to The Biggest Jesus, where our theology doesn't suck. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about a face-to-face -face encounter I had just this last weekend with an eight-year-old demoniac. But first, here's some great news. Christ died for your sins. He was entombed. He was roused the third day. God is at peace with you. Be at peace with God. Before I get to the eight-year-old, I need to set the stage for what happened with this young man. Last week, I released a video called Another Satan, Part 2. In that video, there were several references to the horrible mistranslation forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever. Many Bible translations mistranslate for the eons of the eons as forever and ever, which causes people to think that torment and punishment for unbelievers will last forever and ever. And in many of my videos, I poke fun at this mistranslation. This mistranslation has done more damage to mess with people's peace and security and their understanding of who God and Christ really are than almost any other mistranslations in crappy Bibles, some of which may be your go-to study Bibles. Stop it. Stop studying and trying to learn from crappy Bibles. So here's what happened with the eight-year-old demoniac. My wife Chanel and I were out last Saturday to celebrate her birthday, which was a couple weeks prior. We were just out kind of winging it. We had gone to a small town close to us. We're in the Des Moines metro area in Urbandale, Iowa. We went to a small town just north of us called Polk City. They had a fall fest going on. A lot of towns were celebrating Oktoberfest. It was the 1st of October. This town had a bar in it where we had some free beers coming to us, so we thought, Let's go up there, see what's going on. My son Levi had given us some books where we could get free beers at certain places around town. So we'd never been there. They made some of their own beers. We went up there and the bar that we went to was right on the square and they had this big fall fest going on right on the square. We had a couple beers. My wife didn't like hers. Mine was all right. And we wanted some snacks. Who doesn't like snacks? And at all these festivals, they've got all kinds of goodies to eat. So we were walking around looking for a place to go and to get something to eat, some sweets. We're walking along and we're on a sidewalk. We're walking side by side and approaching us are these two young men. I will call them boys. The one that was walking towards me was about eight years old, just based on his face. He looked pretty small even for eight years old. And the boy that he was with was quite a bit bigger than him, but just by their faces, they looked about the same age. Obviously, I'm looking ahead as I'm walking and this boy is just staring straight through me. He's just looking directly at me and he's saying something to me, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. It was just a bunch of blah, 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 like that. It was just gibberish. And the closest thing I can think of to compare him to, as I was thinking about this later, is this guy. <laughs> so I'm walking straight. He's walking towards me, continuing to say this gibberish while he's staring at me. And now I'm staring at him. So we're locked eye to eye. And he gets right in front of me and he's just a little guy. I'm only like five foot seven. And he's like toe to toe with me and he's looking up at me. And he says one word to me. And he said it just like this. Forever. And, and I'm kind of a perpetual smart ass. So I'm looking down at him and I just start giving him gibberish. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. so I sounded just like this guy. <laughs> so the kid walks around me and I'm, I'm staring at him. And as he's walking away, he's staring back at me and we're locked eye to eye. And he's walking backwards down the sidewalk and I'm continuing to stare at him and he's continuing to stare at me until he's about 20 feet away. He does a quick little spin and they're gone. I was just thinking to myself, what in the hell just happened? He said one word to me, but it's the way he said it. It's the way he approached me, knowing that I had just put this video out just a few days prior, which would, would have been last week. I just thought, did I just come face to face with a demon trying to scare me or intimidate me through this young boy? I have no doubt that this was a demon that was trying to speak to me and intimidate me through this young boy. No doubt of all the words that he could have said, he said that one word forever. You may think it's coincidence. That's fine. But 
in my line of work representing God and Christ and the truth in the scriptures, I know that this translation is horrible forever and ever. Even forever by itself is a bad translation, but when you add the forever and ever, that just compounds it. But that one word forever that was spoken to me by that young boy made me realize there's a lot going on around us. And I already knew this. I already knew there's a spiritual world. Every so often in our lives, we see that spiritual world manifested right in front of our faces, whether it's something we witness from a distance or directly towards us. That's the story of my encounter with this young eight-year-old demoniac. And I call him a demoniac because this demon used him to communicate to me. I'm not saying this boy is possessed. I don't know this boy. Of all the people up on this square, the only person I knew was my wife. We don't know anybody from Polk City. So this was not a coincidence. This was a demon trying to intimidate me through a young boy. And that's one of the things that has fascinated me as I've looked through the scriptures Sometimes very young children can be tormented, used, possessed by demonic, unclean spirits. Let's take a look at the negative result of the mistranslation forever and ever. This subject of the mistranslation forever and forever and ever is worthy of a very large study and a very lengthy video. But for now, I just want to look at one verse that is often referred to by mainstream Christianity to prove that some will be tormented forever and ever, thus nullifying the work of Christ, not only for all mankind, but for all of creation. Revelation 2010 is often used by mainstream Christianity to prove that the torment for unbelievers and rebellious spiritual beings will be forever and ever. Revelation 2010 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. And the adversary who is deceiving them was cast into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the wild beast and where the false prophet are also. And they shall be tormented day and night for the eons of the eons. In the King James Version, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The concordant literal has for the eons of the eons, which reveals to us that the torment of these are during the final two eons. Whether it's the full final two eons or parts of the final two eons, the torment that they undergo is for the eons of the eons. There are five eons in total. The first three eons are wicked, the last two eons are good, and part of the reason that they are good is that the beast, the false prophet, and the adversary are undergoing judgment and are not continuing to cause problems throughout God's creation. But the King James Version, with the translation forever and ever, leads one to believe that this torment will not end, that God will not accomplish his will, not only for all mankind and the salvation of all, but also for the reconciliation of the entire creation, which we read about in Colossians 1, 15-20. 20 and Philippians 2 9 through 11. The Greek for the phrase we are looking at is eis, taus, ainos, ton, ionon. Ionos and ionon are both in the plural, which fits exactly what the translation in the concordant literal New Testament says for the eons of the eon. This is a limited duration. An eon is a limited time with a beginning and an end. For the eons of the eons is a limited time also with a beginning and an end, even though the duration spans multiple eons. The translation forever and ever is misleading and denies the work of Christ for all of mankind and all of creation in the salvation and reconciliation of all who are in God's creation. Thus, God and Christ are denied, and man's peace about his future is diminished, even to the point of being tormented now because of future torment that awaits much of humanity and God's creation. Regardless of what demons try to tell us through eight-year-olds, and regardless of what mainstream Christianity tries to tell us, even the most severe judgment, the judgment that is coming upon the adversary, the beast, and the false prophet, will not hinder God from accomplishing his will for mankind and the rest of his creation. God's will will be done, regardless of whether you believe it's forever and ever. It's not. No torment or judgment is everlasting or eternal. All of God's judging is done within the scope of the eons. And the consummation of the eons, when God is all in all, will become a reality. When he will truly be all 
in all of his creation. If this video has helped you, please hit the like and subscribe below so that this message of the true Savior, the biggest Jesus, and the Almighty God can get out to a wider audience. This truth sets people free from current torment, thinking that either they are headed for torment or their friends, family, and loved ones are headed for future torment. That will be unending. And because you've watched this far, I offer you an invitation to watch this video next.